Ben Kenningsberg, uh, New York Times, he said that it was topical in broad strokes, yet frustratingly allergic to, to particulars. And Nick Shager with the Daily Beast said, so generic is the reunited states that Recky doesn't even have anyone specifically define what it currently means in terms of policy stances and cultural attitudes to be a Republican or Democrat. So I'm curious what your response would be to people who feel that the movie is overly generalized, lacking specific examples or instruction for where to go from there. So I would I would love to address both of those. And let's start with with the New York Times one, because I think that one is is a little easier. And that is, I think I think to a certain extent he's right because it because that's life, right? Like people in life don't go around saying oh, here's the solution, you know, here, you know, here's, here's your five index, index cards with your, with your flash words and memorize them and, and you're good to go. Or like, you know, here's the four letter acronym. Like these are real people who in some cases have lost family members to white supremacists who are traveling the country seeking answers for themselves, right? So, I mean, I remember feeling this way too. I remember kind of feeling like, hey, like this project in some cases, does provide some very tangible examples of like listening and having a conversation and keeping an open mind and david leverton in one scene confronts his white privilege it's such a powerful scene right where he's mm -hmm. like you know i don't he says uh, i don't like the words white privilege and the woman asks him why and he's like oh, i just I, I don't know but I, I just don't like it right and it's he yeah. you can see he's uncomfortable and and it's it's those kinds of transformative moments that these characters go through that i think is so important to see it's so poignant to see and it's so it's just it's, it's powerful and it's fascinating, but you know, what is the exact prescriptive thing that you take from that? Is it like, well, you know, white privilege, white privilege exists and white people need to be made, made aware of it? I don't know. I don't think that's necessarily the right answer. Maybe it is, but I don't know if that's necessarily the lesson that you take away from that scene. So anyway, the, the, the broader point that I'm trying to make is that I think that's the, that's the nature and style of a lot of Veritate documentaries, but I think there's a lot of beauty in that ambiguity because a lot of different people take away a lot of different things from that ambiguity right like i i saw a tweet yesterday where a woman said i i just watched this film with my millennial children and and and, and at no point in the film did they even touch their phones and there was another uh tweet that i saw where a woman was talking about how beautiful it was and how she cried throughout the film so i think it's such an emotional film that i think we'd probably lose a lot of the reality and a lot of that emotional life that it has if we suddenly turned to a talking head who was like well now uh, let's talk about you know the four qualities of uh you know how to how to bridge the divide and it takes out a chalkboard and whatnot so i think i think that criticism is fair but just giving you the the, the, the counterpoint which is i think it's that's the nature of verite documentaries no i i i agree with you because there's to, to try to offer a blanket solution to a problem that is different for everybody or everybody's at a different place in their journey with the with whatever issue there is to try to offer this is the one size fits all solution that you need to do would just be it i don't think that would have worked there's, there's no one size fits all solution it's and it's and, it, and, and 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 it's a nuanced issue right like we're talking about the the, the political and, and civil warfare that's happening in this country right now. And it's unfolding on multiple different battlegrounds, right? It's in, unfolding in social media, it's unfolding in mainstream media, it's unfolding in politics at the na federal level, at the, at the national level, it's unfolding in our community, communities, it's unfolding in our families, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, it's such a nuanced, multi-layered, multi-faceted, historic issue that I, I don't see how it, you know, anyone can kind of come out of it with like the easy, the easy lessons in the playbook. Now to address the second review, which I think is far more fascinating um, and, and, and far more scathing actually, to be, to be honest with you, like the New York Times is actually very, very generous, you know, hopeful moments in a political war. And, uh, and it was actually a very generous interview, but uh, review, sorry, but the Daily Beast tore us to shreds. And, and, you know, we, we read that and we're kind of thinking, oh, this is interesting, you know, like, you know, they're calling us like, you know, uh, Nazi sympathizers and all this. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of looking at this and I'm like, oh, interesting. <laughs> and, and then on the, I think on the same day, the Daily Wire publishes uh, their review and it's, and it's pretty much as scathing, if not even more scathing. Now here you have two polar opposite outlets. One of them is essentially a left-wing outlet. One of them is essentially a right-wing outlet. And what was fascinating was these these reviews were saying the opposite thing to each other. One yeah. was saying, oh, these guys are Nazi sympathizers. And one was saying, oh, these guys are BLM promoters. So I, I thought that was fascinating <laughs> because it was like, wait, like, how can you be both? <laughs> you know you know what I mean? So, <laughs> oh my gosh. so, so I, I, I think to a certain extent, those two, um, those two reviews 
were perhaps a little biased and perhaps kind of approaching it from kind of a leftist or a rightist uh, mindset. And to Sol's earlier point, our target audience is very much kind of like center, left of center, right of center. We're not trying to, you know, I don't think this documentary is necessarily targeted like at, you know, at the Proud Boys or like, you know, at, at the far left. We're not trying to change the like fringes, you know, and like suddenly convert, you know, swaths of white supremacists into becoming like family lovers. I mean, if that happens, great. But it's really, it's really targeted at like kind of center left, center right, center that what's 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 known as the exhausted majority right it's like you have 30 yeah. percent of people that are you know kind of quite left 30 percent that are quite right you have 40 percent of people that are like you know center majority and the film uh, actually in the some of the demographics that we've seen resonate well in terms of ads and some of the other kind of data analysis we're running is women specifically women over 40. uh you know i, I think that 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 theme of motherhood really resonates you know with the through line of susan bro and and aaron leverton and kind of you know her family and, and all this stuff so anyway, coming back to the Daily Beast review, I thought, I thought, you know, look, we we value all feedback. You know, I'm, I'm I would never say, oh, that reviewer is, you know, dumb or anything like that. We 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 value all feedback. I'm sure there were some valid observations in there, but I do think that the Daily Beast and the Daily Wire, are, it's kind of a fascinating case study. I I think that there is a, a really interesting like case study for like a political science class or something to look at this film and then look at those two reviews and mm -hmm. just be and just go to town on it. You know what I mean? Because it's like. I think those reviews say say as much or even more about the reviewers and the news outlet state of mind than it does about our film. You know what I mean? Because it's almost like the film is kind of reflecting back like people's biases. Because like what it like what in the film is promoting Black Lives Matter? Like nothing. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So mm -hmm. uh, anyway, that's that's kind of my opinion of the Disney piece. Why don't you subscribe? It'll last longer.